Hey, good morning. It's my friends. Uh, welcome to Monday. It's our second week of missing school due to the COVID quarantine. In fact, I hope that you'll notice that we're going to change the title of this little adventure we're on from COVID coping tips to the COVID quarantine or CQ coping tips. Well, that's because this really isn't about coping with COVID. We don't, I don't have any expertise in that. It's about coping with what happens when we're stuck at home. We're not able to meet together as a school community. I'm going to do these just as a, a part of wanting to stay connected. Uh, I can say, like, I miss you guys. I would love to see any of you, even, even those of you that uh, I don't talk to very often or maybe I've never talked to or I don't know very well. Or Shoot, even those of you that don't like me, for crying out loud, I would love to see any of you. But the reality is we're now into the second week, and so we've got to kind of hunker down and get used to this new reality. Uh, the novelty has worn off. And now there's this sense of long-term stuck at home, not being able to be at school. And so we can expect some changing emotions. We can expect that we're going to go through a cycle of emotions related to grief. Now, um, I feel like a teacher here, but I noticed that not a lot of you have taken time to uh, see the video. Not as many saw the video from Friday. Uh, what I want to encourage you, if you haven't, is to go back and watch that one because it has a tool in it to help you as a family process emotions. Uh, it's a way of putting emotions down on paper where everybody can kind of say, hey, this is the box that I'm in right now. The reality is we're going to bounce around in those different boxes from, from being mad sometimes to being sad sometimes to just feeling hopeless. There's a lot of emotions and the little tool that I provided on Friday can help you do that. So go back and watch that one if you need that to help you and your family deal with the reality of the emotions because none of your emotions are bad. None of them are, are inappropriate. Every emotion is okay. But not everybody in the family is going to have the same emotions at the same time. And then we bump into each other's emotions and it can be frustrating if we don't have a way to process it. So that can help a little bit. Today what I really want to talk about is um, just a, a concept of to be aware of as we deal with emotional stress. Anytime things are out of control, where we don't feel like things are the way that they should be, we experience stress that leads to some negative emotions. And those are the grief emotions that I talked about on Friday. Um, there's nothing wrong with those emotions. In fact, they're a healthy part of dealing with things that are difficult for us and a way to uh, process and get through to a level where we can accept these new realities. But we live in a time when it's becoming trendy to diagnose ourselves or to diagnose each other with mental illness terms that are not accurate descriptors of what we're really going through. And in this time when we're going to experience more anxiety and more sadness and maybe more frustration, people may begin to suspect that, oh, well, it's not that I'm going through a time when I'm sad. I actually have depression. Or it's not that I'm just really nervous because I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know what's going to happen next. I have anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder. Or I'm sometimes happy and I'm sometimes sad, so I must be bipolar. And so what I want to do is give you as a family and as individuals a way to see this that helps differentiate between mental health. Because when I say the word mental health, many people think mental illness. But there's a big difference between mental health and mental illness. So if I talk about physical health, most people, if I say physical health, what comes to mind? They think about exercise and nutrition and taking care of yourself. They don't automatically, if I say physical health, think about something like strep throat or the coronavirus. They think about taking care of themselves. But if I say mental health, many people automatically default to depression and bipolar and ADHD and all these diagnoses. The diagnoses are real. I'm just not, I just don't think that every time we talk about mental health, we should talk about mental illness. And so what's true about mental health is we can be mentally healthy, but we can also be mentally unhealthy. We can be physically healthy. We can also be physically unhealthy. If I'm physically healthy, I'm eating well, I'm exercising, I'm staying active, I'm drinking lots of water, I'm sleeping appropriately. If I'm physically unhealthy, I'm not eating well, I'm not taking care of myself, then I am more prone to be physically ill. I might get more physically sick if I'm not physically healthy. The same process occurs for mental health. There's also something called mental unhealth. 
where we're not taking care of ourselves emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, in different ways, so that we feel a little bit more healthy mentally. If we are mentally unhealthy, we are more prone towards some kind of diagnosis. The problem of the culture we live in now is that it's almost trendy to get a diagnosis. Oh, that's just my depression. Oh, that's just my anxiety. I think we need to resist that right now. And so what we need to do is we need to choose activities that will make us mentally healthy. We're going to get stronger during this time, not less healthy. But to do that, we're going to have to choose mental health. We're going to have to do things that help us feel healthy mentally so that we don't devolve into the mental unhealth of getting stuck in our sadness or stuck in our anxiety or stuck in our anger. We're going to move into mental health. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a framework by which you can kind of look at yourself in different parts of your life and move towards things that are mentally healthy and recognize those things that are mentally unhealthy. We're going to resist the diagnosis. When you give yourself a diagnosis, you're now stuck in that diagnosis. If you are have depression, then now depression defines who you are and everything that happens is filtered through that. We're going to resist a diagnosis and we're going to recognize that we can be mentally healthy, we can be mentally unhealthy, and we're going to choose to be mentally healthy. And we're going to do it together. We're going to do it as a family. We're going to do it through internet connections with people that we care about. One of the things that you can do, one of the most significant, is to intentionally care about others that you're not physically present with and reach out to them. You all have relatives that maybe now's the time to write a letter or connect with them via the internet or just connect with them on Facebook. Do something to connect outside of your immediate family with people that you know and that you care about. It's a very mentally healthy thing to do. All right, we're going to be mentally healthy as a community. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.